Hey everyone, and welcome back to a Let's Play of Game Builder Garage slash also mini review since this is the first entry in this series that we're going to do. Now basically, if all of you saw my first video on Game Builder Garage, I basically just showed you how I built the first game and unfortunately, due to time constraints, I wasn't really able to shoot a commentary to that video. So I did promise that once the E3 rush was going to be over, that I was going to circle back to this game. Now, rather than just doing a bland mini review, I thought I would show you at the same time some of the best games that I've found online so far. Because even though the game's only been out a couple of weeks, people have been hard at work. And honestly, I found quite a few really interesting games online that you can download for yourself. If you need to know where you can download them, it's on mygarage.games, which is a site that is set up for sharing garage builder games. I'll leave that down below in the description of the video if you want to check it out for yourself. So what we'll do is we'll play through a few of the best games I've found so far. Then at the end, we'll do a small five minute section where I'll give you my thoughts on Game Builder Garage, whether I think you should pick it up, what are the strong points and what are the weak points of this game. If ever you want to pop straight to that commentary because you're not into looking at the games we're going to play, I'm going to be leave it time stamped in the video down below. Also, I think this could be a pretty interesting reoccurring series to do every couple of weeks. So if any of you out there are building games on Game Builder Garage, you can always leave the codes in the commentary down below in this video, or you can send them to the channel email, which is on the info page of my channel. But anyway, let's get started on a couple of the games. Don't forget that if you do like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So the first game I want to take a look at is called Garage Man. Now, Garage Man is basically based on Mega Man's design. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know I'm a huge Mega Man fan. Now, mechanics wise, this is the best Mega Man style game I found so far. Number one, however, they didn't implement any design elements, but nonetheless, the controls are very crisp. The shooting mechanics are also very crisp. And also, this is one of the only ones that has a life bar. At the top left, that gray bar is your life bar. And as you take hits, you'll see it'll decrease. And basically, that is an interesting part, and it is very, very true to the Mega Man design. And as I said, it is one of the first ones that I found. Obviously, the only thing you have to control Mega Man with the joystick. I really wish that Game Builder Garage would make it easier for controlling characters with the D-pad for people who would prefer that. But nonetheless, it is pretty interesting. He even implemented bigger enemies like that that take multiple hits. Very, very Mega Man style-y. So like I said, we'll look at another Mega Man after this that has more of the visual design elements, but I would say less of the mechanics. Let's take a hit here and you'll see that life bar go down. As you saw on the top left, life bar goes down. Now we won't play through the whole stage. I'll, I'll put up the code if you guys want to basically uh, enjoy this game. I'll be linking down below in the description of the video all the codes to these different games if you want to try them out for yourself. I just want to give you a feeling of what it's like. We might not make it all the way through the demo because there are a few more difficult platforming sections here. Not crazy difficult, but if you do miss it, unfortunately, you have to start over. And here is the more challenging section where basically he takes a couple of hits and you got a mash. But ultimately, it's a really solid first demo, and he's letting us know that he is going to probably be implementing a boss fight soon. So I will be keeping an eye on Garage Man. It is a pretty interesting first build for a Mega Man-like game. So now, before we move on to another style, let's look at another Mega Man game. This one has the visual style, but I would say less of the controls. Number one, Mega Man is very floaty. If you look at the mechanics, he's very floaty and he bounces when he hits, and that does allow for a little weird platforming a little later on. However, if you just saw, we do have the scrolling screens in this one as Mega Man is known for. The only thing is that you really have to be against the edge of the screen for it to scroll. And I do find it scrolls a little bit slow. I'm gonna be looking at the code scene if we can just sort of brush that up and have it scroll a little quicker. But we'll be getting to the weirdest mechanic section of this game. So far, as I said, these are early builds, so these are very good early builds. I'm not saying this because I think people put a lot of hard work into these games, especially in such a short period of time, and they're a really nice starting point. 
I'm just letting you know, basically, if we could combine the mechanics from that previous Mega Man game with the visuals of this one, I think we would have something quite interesting. Now, um, this is the odd platforming section. It's because your short jump is too high, you always hit your head. And once you've hit your head, you sort of drop straight down. So you've actually got to voluntarily hit your head while you're moving forward here to have that forward momentum to make the jump. It's a little bit odd. But that's how you basically have to make the jump. If not, you're going to drop each and every time. And it's a little bit odd, like I said, mechanics wise. So you've got to time it between the falling of the ball and where you're going to jump and hit your head, basically. And you can make it through the demo. So that is pretty much this demo here. Pretty interesting. Once again, a nice implementation of the Mega Man graphics. Now, the next game I want to look at is someone has actually reproduced very, very closely the first level of Captain Toad. And I really want to shout it out because it is done incredibly well. We have number one, a free roaming camera. You can go full 360 degree view, just like in Captain Toad. Even the music itself is very, very close to what you have in Captain Toad. It is actually a really, really good representation. Now, obviously, the first stage doesn't really have any mechanics or any traps or anything like that. So it's just a simple demo, but it really shows you that with a little bit of work, we could actually reproduce more of the stages because if you implement moving objects, obstacles, we could get some really serious Captain Toad stages done here. And once you get the star, you win the stage. And basically, after a few seconds, you're popped out of the game. Honestly, very simple demo, but I'm just impressed with the quality of work here. That The point isn't to show a very long game. It's to show how quality it is. And honestly, once you pick up that star, you could easily do an automatic teleport to a second stage. And you could, in the first, in the same world design, implement at least three, four stages in a row like that. I think this is a really nice start once again, and I really want to give a shout out to this one. I'm impressed with the quality of it. Now, the next game we're going to take a look at is called Garage League, which is a play on basic Rocket League. And honestly, what is crazy about this game is the AI. Look, the AI is so good in this game, I've actually not managed to score on it yet. Basically, the AI follows the ball around automatically tries to score, and I'll be honest with you, I am having trouble beating this AI. It is pretty fantastic. The mechanics actually work pretty well. Am I actually going to manage to score on this guy for the, like, the first time? But I am just impressed. What impressed me about this game is how good the AI is. Look at, the, look at this, man. It is really tough to get to score on this guy. Oh, I think we might manage finally my first ever goal. I played almost a half hour of this game and I wasn't able to score on this AI. Of course, the mechanics would need a little bit of work. I would say especially on the contact with the ball because it does get take quite a bit to get it rolling in the right direction. Once you do, though, it is uh, there is a lot of um, momentum in this game. And you see, look, th this AI is really good. If we give him just a couple of seconds, it is pretty guaranteed he's going to get that ball really close and into that net. See, and unfortunately, you can score from both sides. And there we go. If you don't, if you aren't on the top of your game on this, that AI is going to score on you every time. So what really impressed me with this game, not only are the controls crisp and nice, the physics are pretty good. Like I said, I would still work a little bit on the physics on the ball because I do find it the ball, it takes a lot to get the momentum going in the direction you want. But what I'm really impressed with is the AI in this game. The AI is really good. Now, I'm playing terribly because obviously I'm talking to all of you at the same time. But you can, guys can get the idea of how good this game is. And basically, once you score five goals, you are basically... Oh, I scored on him. So we just went straight for it. Full momentum. Once you get five goals, the game resets. It is a pretty interesting build for an early Rocket League. Don't forget that this is these are games with only two weeks of building into them. Really, really nice once again. I'll be leaving the link down to this one as well. Uh, very interesting. So we're going to do one last game before we get to my favorite one that I found. 
favorite one because rather than being based on an existing IP, it is actually an original creation and it is the most challenging game I have found so far. Simple mechanics, but very challenging. But there's one last one I just want to show you. Pac-Man Garage 2.0. Unfortunately, all it is is a survival game. Basically, all you have to do is your score goes up as you move around and survive. And the longer you survive, the higher your score. And the point is basically to survive as long as you can. But once again, what really impressed me about this game is the AI. All the ghosts act pretty much like the real Pac-Man ghosts. The red one will follow you around as close as possible, just like the real red ghost. The blue one will try to head you off. The, the, the mechanics that the people programmed for these ghosts are really impressive for Game Builder Garage. Now I'm getting killed right out because I'm talking to all of you. I managed to survive for about a minute or two. So if you manage to throw them off for a while, However, it is easy to sort of predict where the ghosts are going to go a little more than the original Pac-Man. But nonetheless, it is very interesting. I would love to see a way to implement the pellets, the power-ups, being able to eat the ghosts. But for an early build of Pac-Man, I think this is another really, really impressive one. Now, the last game I actually want to take a look at is my overall favorite garage builder game so far. It is called Super Fluffy Ball. It is an original concept. It is a super simple design, yet very challenging. Number one, I want to shout out once again to the quality of the build. We have the free roaming camera. The stage is not very long, but it is so challenging, I actually haven't managed to finish it yet. And we'll see there's a couple of design elements that really show that it's a simple design, yet the person took the time to do it very, very well. And that, I think, is the important part. To not overshoot your design, to not go too far, but take a simple concept and build it very, very well. And here we have our first difficult section. And I'm telling you, this game is challenging. It is not simple. Hopefully, we will make it. Yes, we did. Oh my god. I The first time I played this game, it took me almost 30 tries just to get past that first section. And here's the first design element they implemented, a checkpoint system. If we fall from this point on, we will start over at this checkpoint. Now, I'll try to get as far as I can in this game. I actually haven't made it past the next checkpoint. Technically, you can give yourself a challenge and try to carry get the fruit as well. But for the moment, I'm focusing on trying to finish the level instead because I'll be honest with you, this next section is a killer. I haven't been able to finish it yet. Now, controlling the camera and the angle of the ball is very difficult. And as you see, we have a checkpoint system. So then you, at least you get to start from here. But it is very difficult. You'll see when we get to the next part, they get so thin. And the problem is you can't stop your momentum. You can't stop on a dime in this game because you're using a ball-like mechanic. And honestly, as I said, I actually haven't made it past this section yet after dozens and dozens of tries. Now, this is what I love about this game, however. Simple, yet challenging, and very well constructed. Very well thought of, very well constructed. And sorry there, I just fell off ridiculously because I'm talking to all of you once again. But nonetheless, this is an incredibly challenging game, but based off of a very simple concept. Oh my God, thought I was going to finally make it further than I ever made it before. I basically haven't made it past that last transition. That is where, for the moment, I'm always falling off. Once we get to that last transition part, it is the furthest I have ever gotten this level. So the game is short, but I'm telling you, if you... Unless you really get the mechanics down perfectly like first try, you are most likely going to take a little bit of time to finish this game. So close. My God. Once again, that is the furthest I ever got. Hopefully I can finish this level for all of you. We'll give it a couple of more shots. If I don't, we're going to end the trial section here. You guys can try the, video, the game out for yourself and see if you can do better than I did. And honestly, you probably will because mechanics wise, although this game is interesting, it is, oh my God, we made it people. We made it, we made it. I've never finished this game. I finished the first time here with all of you, but I love this design. Very simple design, 
very well implemented. And the worst is you can easily take this simple design and now build level after level after level and get a real full blown game out of this. It is very interesting. Once again, what people can do with game builder garage, obviously you can give yourself a challenge here. You can try to pick up more turnips. You can have uh, less fails and whatnot. And it's awesome because you have the choice here. He even made a gate. You can replay the game or you can leave the game. So if we hit go here, stage starts over and you can try to beat your score once again. Now that's pretty much it for the gameplay section of the video. I'll be leaving all the codes once again in the description of the video. So if you want to download, try any of these games out for yourself. If you want to use the code to start building on your own project based off of these, it is a perfect place to start. I will leave the codes down below. Now I've tried a bunch of other games. Personally, these are the favorite ones I found so far or the ones at least that have impressed me the most so far. So now we get to this section on my thoughts on Game Builder Garage as a whole. Now, number one, I want to say I am impressed with this game. I'm also impressed with the fact that Nintendo launched it at a $30 price point. Knowing Nintendo, I would have been scared they would have tried that $60 price point. A lot of people might have bought the game anyway, but I'm really impressed that they actually launched it at that $30 budget price because it opens up the game to a whole lot of people to give it a try that might not have at the $60 price point. Number two. After working my way through pretty much all the tutorials, I've got to say that they implemented the game also very easy to understand for someone who wants a basic knowledge of the game and also a basic knowledge of how to build a game. If you don't want to go too deep, they do a very good job with the basic tutorials that you go through. Also, I think they did a very nice progression going from a very simple, simple design game with few steps and ending with a much more complex game with a lot of steps. Also, at the same time, it sort of gives you time to digest in between each project and sort of absorb what you need to absorb to be able to move on to the next one. Next, we get to a sort of mixed point. Because overall, I am impressed as well at how open the software is. You can actually do way more with the software than I first thought. You can do your own designs. And as we can see, people have already come up with pretty open designs based on what Nintendo gives you. So there's actually a lot of possibilities with this software that originally I thought Nintendo was going to cut out and do a very superficial program and really limit you very heavily. Problem is, a lot of the tutorials that have to do with those advanced mechanics aren't included in the tutorials themselves. You do have that extra section where you can go deeper into the mechanics, but actually understanding them is done in a much less friendly way. What that means is if you want to start programming like AI and all stuff like that, that is stuff you're probably going to have to figure out for yourself. You're going to have to watch YouTube videos on people who have already been programming in other systems and that have learned how to do it here or teach you how to do it here. But that's always going to be a negative point of making your software this open, because ultimately, once you get into those, those really, really deep concepts, you're going to lose a lot of people and not everyone is going to go through a tutorial that would take, let's say, a week to finish a game. That is understandable. I understand why Nintendo did it, which is why I'm saying this is a mixed point of my thoughts on the game. Because I'm happy they made it that open, but you're going to have to invest a lot of your own time into figuring this stuff out. If you want to go really deep, get AI working, get those checkpoints working, get all those advanced mechanics in there. Lastly, we're going to get to the negative point that I have for this game. And ultimately, I only really have one negative point, but unfortunately, I do think it's a pretty important one. Right now, unfortunately, Game Builder Garage doesn't allow you to export your game in any other way than sharing it through the in-game code. And unfortunately, that's going to be a massive downside. Why? Let's put it this way. If you're getting started in programming, this is a perfect start point. You can get your feet wet. You can find out if you like programming. Problem is, is that if you get really deep into it and you fall in love with it and you actually want to make a game and maybe eventually, I don't know, make it into a long-term project, think of one day actually making a game that you could put on the eShop or something like that. You can't do that in Game Builder Garage. So unfortunately, what I think we're going to have is going to happen with Game Builder Garage is you're going to get a lot of projects started. The person's going to work on them for maybe a month, two months, three months. 
And then if they're really wanting to put a lot of time into it, they're going to come to the realization, hey, if I want to one day make something serious out of this game, I have to move to a different framework. So unfortunately, I think we're going to get a lot of startup products on Game Builder Garage, but all the really serious programmers or people that are really serious about the game are unfortunately going to take their projects and move them elsewhere. What that means is we're going to get a bunch of unfinished games here. The only thing I'm sort of hoping is maybe Nintendo has a future project update to the game where they're actually going to make a way to publish these games on the eShop. Meaning that someone who wants to program a very serious game, get into it, work on it for like six months to a year, could actually eventually, you know, profit from their game. Because ultimately, someone who gets really seriously into it, I understand that a lot of people are just doing this for the fun of it. And that's that's perfectly fine. The only problem is that if eventually you're going to be working on something for a year and a year and a half, a lot of people are going to want to be able to share that project to a wider audience eventually. And if they get to that point, they're going to have to move to a different game or a different pr framework altogether. They're, they're going to have to work to basically a real engine rather than Game Builder Garage. Now, is that a bad thing in itself? No. If all you want to do is get your feet wet, have a little bit of fun, all the better to you. It's just unfortunately, I don't see anyone working on like a two year project here and coming out with a mind blowing game, knowing that it'll be locked down on Game Builder Garage for its whole life span. Now, as a closing, should you pick up Game Builder Garage? Ultimately, if you really want to get into programming games, I would say this is an excellent program to pick up. If you like playing really simple, interesting games like the ones I showed you, like Super Fluffy Ball, because I do think we're going to get more of those really interesting, simple projects as we go through. You know what? $30 for an unlimited number of games that could be coming in the future is a really decent price. So ultimately, two people should pick up this project. You want to get your feet wet, start programming before maybe investing in a more serious program. Or number two, you want a really cheap game that has an infinite possibility in the future to play little tiny games like this and come back each and every week and discover new programs. So I hope you all enjoyed this first installment of Let's Play Game Builder Garage. Based on the reception, based on if you guys get into it, if you start sending me your codes and whatnot, we might have future installments of this again. So now it's all up to you. If you like this, if you have games to share with me, you can share them in the comments down below. You can send them to the channel email. Or if all you want me to do is scour the websites and find other great games like this to share with all of you, you know, like I said, every couple of weeks, let me know in the comments down below. If you want another entry in this series, just let me know. And also on the way out, probably the best way to show me you like this video is to hit the like button as I say usually. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.